chapter 7. God bless you. Amen. Mm. Oh, we've been taking step by step and I hope that people are following. Okay, who's going to read for us? Now, if you open uh, Revelation chapter 7, you can as well open Matthew 24. We're going to take one verse day. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Also, we can see from the Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Then I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds, so they did not blow on the earth or the sea, or even on any tree. And I saw another angel coming up from the east, carrying the seal of the living God. And he shouted to those four angels who, who had been given power. Okay. And he shouted to those four angels who had been given power to harm the land and sea. Wait, don't harm the land or the sea or the trees until you've placed a seal. Until you've placed the seal of God on the four heads of the seven. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of a trumpet. And they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the furthest end of the earth and heaven. <coughs> Let's read again. And he will send out his angels with a mighty blast of trumpet. And they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the furthest end of the of the heaven. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then um on Revelation 7, read from verse 9 again. Atenulo 7, verse 9. Kamu atzeo katadima, mika ona bungata, bobu hulu babatu. Bahu simotu yaka, zeba mhumba baana. Badi chaba zohi, leba mifuta yohi, leba merabe yohi, leba dipuo zohi. Baya mi pila tiroli, mi pila konyana. Baya peridi apaho, zetelele zetuyo. Batu eridi palema, matohum abo. Bante Bahua come and do a family by Pulaki Amutimu alone, or it's in Tony, the Agoya. Yes, Miss Conti, okay. Living Miman Rick of Fell, and I am a dear city home, the Bahu, the Bupu at the Pilan, the Mimi Hardy, and our Kadifasha will be like the home, Agapella Mutimu Adu, Amen, Homutimu Aruna, Ibe Poko. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for honoring us with your presence one more time in this place. 
we are experiencing lord and we are acknowledging that you are part of us even right now i pray father that may every soul that is represented in this place that is sitting lord under the ministry of your word this morning my god may we be changed may we be transformed may you plant may you rebuke lord may you may you break may you build may you restore may you make us lord to be who you want us to be in the name of jesus i believe father that this is all you're going to do this morning mighty god to prepare us even in such a time as this lord we pray we believe that when your mouth speaks some things change some things lord turn around when you spoke in the valley of dry bones the dry bones had life when you spoke when there was nothing earth was created lord when you speak this morning we believe that something will be made up something will be formed the hope will be restored direction will be there we hope that lord strength shall come we believe god that you are here in jesus name we believe god that this is the day that you have made you shall be glad and rejoice in it we thank you lord that you're going to put us into structure you're going to lord put us together you're going to lord unite us in love in jesus name i pray amen hallelujah in the book of revelation chapter 7 we're learning that there are people that are introduced in heaven and those people that are introduced in heaven in this chapter they are in two categories the first category the bible calls them jews that were sealed and the second category is Gentiles. Note that the first category with is the Jews. It is numbered. No more. That means it is a fixed number. But the second category of the people that are there, it is called Gentiles. And those ones, they are not numbered. The Bible says it is a great multitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, what is happening in here, it is, it is after the rapture. When we read before chapter 7, we learned a bit about the rapture. Now, rapture, it is something that is going to happen when we all do not know. It is a secret event. Nobody knows the day and the hour. If anybody tells you the day and the hour, that is not from the Lord. Because the Bible says nobody knows. Even the angels do not know. So nobody knows the day of rapture. So rapture will happen at any time. And it will be a secret event. But what we are reading about in chapter 7 it's not the rapture it is the end or it is a judgment or it is the end of end time it is in heaven rapture is not about people going to heaven it's about people going to the sky it's about people being with Jesus reigning with him in the sky not in heaven hallelujah so what you are reading about here it is not about the sky, it is about heaven. So, what between the rapture and what you're reading about, there is thousand years. Now, from the time Jesus comes, we will be able to predict when is the judgment day. But we cannot predict now because our, our landmark is the coming of Jesus. So, once, once Jesus comes, then we will be able to know. Now, when we're talking about going to heaven, it is not, I was almost shocked when the Bible said the people were numbered who were in heaven. But I was so blessed when I heard about the Gentiles that were not numbered that if I'm not part of the Jews then I must be part of the Gentiles so I know that we are going to heaven through Jesus they are the Except for the blood of Jesus. 
who were already sealed. But the Gentiles were sealed in the spirit. The Jews were sealed in their forehead. But the Gentiles were sealed in the spirit. Now we have seen a whole lot of Jews and Gentiles. If we read, if we read the, the, the epistles, uh, and the Colossians, and, the, and, and all those books, we will read so much about the Jews and the Gentiles. How many of us understand the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles? Now, uh, without getting, without being too theological about it. Jews just means those people that are coming from the Bethlehem Are you with me now? Jews are those people who are coming from the patriarch of Israel. So Jew, being a Jew is a matter of birth. So when the Bible talks about Jews, it's talking about those people. But when it talks about Gentiles, it talks about everyone else. So when the Bible talks of Gentiles, Gentiles is speaking about you and me. So the, 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 the Jews are numbered. And the Jews, they inherited who they are. By birth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. Jews are what they are but because of where they were born. But it's not my fault I was not born a Jew. So I cannot be excluded from the things of God just because I'm not a Jew. Yeah. That is why being in heaven it's not a matter of you are it's not a matter of where were you born it's a matter of are you born again wherever you are born doesn't matter what matters is were you born again hallelujah so the entrance or the qualification to heaven is the being born again it doesn't matter where you were born I would be worried if the Bible was addressing us like Jews. Because it would address us as its law. So the Jews represent those people who were born in the right place. Who have got the right history. Who have got the right story to tell. Those people who have got something to show. But unlike when it talks about the Gentiles, it talks about those people who have got nothing to tell about their history. Those people who have got nothing to show. Those people are saying, I am here because of Jesus. I do, I do not deserve to be here. There is nothing good and nice that I can present. All I can present is what the Lord has done through me. What makes me here is the grace of God. It is not where I was born, but it is about Him that found me. It is not about the good story I can give. It is not about the, how good my parents were. It is not about how good my household was. It is not about how good my character was. It is not about how good a testimony I can give. But it is about the grace of God. It is about the covering of God. I am here because God did something through me. I am here because I'm favored by Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Are you with me, church? And I like what these ones. They did not qualify to be there. They were not a specific number. They were just a countless number. That gives me hope. That in the way I'm not recording. Yes, it's in the way I'm in a recording. What did you say? You want to take Now, watch this. When we get to heaven, getting in heaven is a matter of being born again. Yeah. But being crowned. It's a matter of the works. So now, not everybody will be crowned. Only the people whose works have passed through the fire. But the more they put in the fire, they did not burn. They were just shining. Mm. Do you know that we are here? Everybody is working and doing something for the Lord. But not all the works will pass through the fire and remain after the fire. Some works will be gone after the fire. Let me give you some tip. I'm going to talk about crowns next time. But let me, let me brief you about works. Anything that you are doing so that people can see you when it passes through the fire I fit up it all chant way oh chant I know your crown is big if you are doing it for the people there will be no crown but if you are doing it from the heart if you are doing it for the Lord the more it is the fire is the more it will just shine brighter and it's the more God will reward you so whatever you are doing if you are not doing it from the love of God if you are doing it for the past it will burn in the fire I don't care how much work you are doing if you are doing it for me it will burn in the fire but if you are doing it for the Lord we shall see it shine again if you are doing it for the money, money will reward you when you are on earth. But when you are in heaven, it will burn in the fire. That is why the Bible says, you will have finished your reward. So whatever you are doing, don't do it for your husband. Don't do it for the pastor. Don't do it for your wife. Don't do it for the people sitting there. Do it as unto the Lord. Whatever your hand find up to do, It's better to do nothing if you're going to do it for the people. Because when you're doing it for the people, they can do it. But if you're doing it for the Lord, it doesn't matter how you do it. We just want to get blessed anyway. It doesn't matter how skilled or unskilled you are. If you're doing it for the Lord, it's going to bless us. It's going to heal us. It's going to elevate us. When it has the love of God, it's going to build the church. It's going to build the body of Christ. So whatever you are doing, don't do it for your neighbor. Do it as unto the Lord. So being in heaven is a matter of being born again. But being crowned is a matter of works. 
Let me let me let me let me let me say some things that are very important about works. Works is not about things you do for the Lord. Mm. I do not make a mistake. Uh. Works is not about things you do for the Lord. But it is the things the Lord does through you. There is nothing that you can do for the Lord that can please Him. The only thing you can do for the Lord is what He does through you. Oh, hallelujah! hallelujah. Whatever you are doing, if it's not the Lord in you, doing it through you, it does not please God. That is why you must, God must be in you. So that emotions. It must not be the matter of emotions. It must be the matter of the spirit. Hey. If you are doing it from yourself, sometimes you gonna remind us. You see, this is me. So we do not want yours. We want God doing it through you. So that we can praise God. About what is doing through you. If it's you, you're going to remind us. And you're going to tell us we owe you. What I'm doing here. I'm than the hand on the receiving side. Now, I'm not saying this to raise for the conference. In fact, this is not about money. You'll, you'll, you'll catch me just now. When I give, what I give, I give a song. Rainbow Family Church Rainbow Family Church is a blessing to many people. It's a pity that we do not open a space for people to testify. Yeah. If we had platforms, then you would realize that the church is a blessing to many people. Yeah. But now when you're talking about Rainbow Family Church, we are not talking about the four walls. These are the four walls that can do nothing for no one. But we're talking about what God is doing through some people in here. So for somebody to be blessed, God has got to deposit himself in somebody sitting here so that somebody who walks in can receive what God has deposited in the life of somebody. Are you with me now? Hallelujah. If it was in the Lord depositing to somebody. If it was coming from somebody's abilities, it would run dry at some point. But it comes from the Lord. So blessed is the hand that 
gives. Than the hand that receives. You know what that means? It means if, if I'm with the Lord now. And the Lord gives me. The Lord gives me something. And then I come. I give you what the Lord has given me. The fact that it's empty now. It gives me an opportunity to go back to the Lord. And the Lord gives me again. And then I can go and be a blessing. And I give again. But because I'm empty again, then I can go back to the Lord. Now, guess what? Who has been with the Lord more times? Me that give is the one that is with the Lord. So being with the Lord is a blessing. So it is being with the Lord that is a blessing to me. You have got the things of God. But you are not with God. I can't. 
put Jehovah must come inside of us. And do the what the Bible says when we accept him, he will become the Lord. Somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Now in Greek, this word the Lord, it translated to mean that a, a, a complete owner of something. Hallelujah. Alright? It, it, it is called curious. Peter Curious. Yes, yeah, called curious. And curious means a person who has got a complete ownership over something. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if I have got this this uh, this juice and it is mine. And I've paid for it. Well, somebody paid for me, but now it's mine. Uh -huh. Now I am the curious of this. I am the Lord of this. Meaning, when it is drank, it depends on me. It means where it is depends on me. I can do nothing by myself. I know until the Lord of it decides what happens to it. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing me. This, this suit that I'm wearing today, I am the Lord over it. When it is washed, depends on me. With what it's worn, depends on me. Where it's worn, depends on me. I decide to wear it on sight in the dust. It cannot complain because the Lord has decided. So I have got complete ownership on it. So when you are born again, when you give your life to the Lord, then the Lord has complete ownership over you. Where you are depends on Him. How you live depends on Him. What you eat depends on Him. He provides your daily bread. He provides you with the breath. It makes you wake up in the morning. Yes. When you work, it depends on him. Yes. So he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So he is your Lord. Somebody say, he is my Lord. He is my Lord. Uh-huh. So stop telling us. Can I do it? I think it's because it's me. No, you have the Lord. I mean, I never make it. No, the Lord will decide. And when the Lord decides, nobody can shut that door. I'm coming to this point to say, when God comes in, it's just like this, this, this hand is more glove. This glove can touch nothing until the hand is coming. Watch this, watch this carefully. A person is a body, soul, and spirit. Amen. But let's focus on the body and spirit. Now, this is your body. Amen. Say, this is my body. Okay, this is your spirit. What is this? Now the spirit is in your body. Then you're becoming a living person, a living soul. If you don't have a spirit, you are a ghost. If you've got the body but no spirit, you're a ghost. If you are the spirit, if you are the eh? no, if you are a body without a spirit, it's doom. How many Then if you are a spirit without a body, you are a ghost. You need both to be here. Anybody without a spirit here? All bury you. Hallelujah. Anybody without a body here? You are a demon. <laughs> So you need both to be here. Are you with me? Then now the Bible says, we give our lives to the Lord. How do we do that? We don't, we don't understand. Because as in the we give the spirit. So we give the spirit to God. And then what happens with the body? 
then he gives us his spirit then the body Bible says is a temple of the spirit now it's no longer I it's no longer I that lives but it is him in my spirit yeah. so where I am I depend on the spirit I am just a car he is a driver I've never seen a car being where it wants but the driver determines where it goes and the driver is responsible for the fuel I've never seen the car working so hard to get the next full tank it just stops when there is no fuel so if the Lord is in you he is responsible for your mobility he is responsible for you to keep going if it's not him you will just stop so stop boasting to us we know that it is God if he decides to shut the doors hey, those doors will be shut and you will do nothing so we give our, our lives to the Lord the Lord gives us his spirit then it is no longer us that lives but it is him that lives in us our lives are hidden in heavenly places this thing is like this you are just a glove you need God to be in you without him you are just a useless cloth but because this is you when you want to attack me you go to the glove but when you come to the glove to want to try and destroy the glove you will face the mighty hand of God you will face the power of God because I am not just a person I am just a glove of God what I touch the strength I have is not my strength it is the strength of the Lord when any demon tries to attack you it will never win because it's facing the Lord when you are fighting it is not your battle it is the Lord's battle and when it is not the power of the glass. It is the power of him that is in the glass. When we break demons and when we break strongholds, it is not because of our faces, but it is because of him that is in us. Greater is he that is in us than the one who is in the world. Doesn't make sense. Does the scripture make sense? Ah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah. Mm. Ah. Let me make this quick. Can somebody please charge this thing for me? So I've spoken about the presence of the Gentiles in heaven. And now, when we continue in the chapter 7, we realize that the Gentiles were standing when we read in the other chapters we found that they were uh, the 24 elders were sitting they are standing now I ask myself a question when Jesus left in John he said I'm going to prepare you a place but now they are standing where is the place that Jesus went to prepare but I realize these people have just came in and when they come in they are not sitting they are standing up and when they are standing up they are praising God they are doing a thanksgiving Hey, I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between a thanksgiving and testimony. 
There's a difference between a thanksgiving and a testimony. Thanksgiving is like you that we are receiving when I was demonstrating. Thanksgiving is So thanksgiving is done by the people who are receiving. Thanksgiving is talking about to it's in a man. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving, somebody will receive something from the Lord. Hey, Thanksgiving, but testimony but is not for those people. Testimony, testimony is for the people who were used by God. So, manga would say, oh, what's the best seed? That is a testimony. But when you receive from the Lord, it's a thanksgiving. Not a testimony. Now the book of Revelation make a distinction between thanksgiving and a testimony. Later on, we're gonna hear that the Bible says you shall defeat the devil by the word of testimony. Not the word of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the when the Gentiles arrive in heaven, they they are not sitting. They are standing. And they are giving thanks. Because they know that without Jesus, I wouldn't be here. They know that without Jesus, I wouldn't be here. If it was by what I did, I could have been in hell. I could have been the one of the devil's agents. But for me to be here, it took Jesus to take off how he looks and put it on to how I look. They are you with me, church. Hallelujah. And that is the reason I sing and I shout for Jesus came down and stood in my place. The Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the Lamb. So for me to be in heaven, he took off how he looks and he gave it to me so that I don't look the way I used to look that is why I'm able to get in heaven because Some say enter his gates with thanksgiving. I get testimony with thanksgiving because everybody is there because of the giving from the God from the Lord. But to go and sit and be crowned is not a matter of thanksgiving. It's a matter of testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me close by showing something interesting mathematically. The Bible says in, the, in Genesis, God created everything in six days. And on the seventh day, 
Washana pants. Adula fat. Wakumona. Apumona. Wali delen to me se batuna batani. I am not talking so about Mawa Abayinti. Somebody say amen. amen. And now, watch this. Um, God created from the day of creation until the day of Noah. It took 2,000 years. Somebody say 2,000 years. 2,000 years. And then from the times of Noah until Jesus, it took, it took 2,000 years. Somebody say 2,000 years. And from the time of Jesus until the year 2000, it took 2,000 years. Somebody say 2,000 years. And now the Bible says 1,000 years is a day to the Lord. So in other words, the earth, according to God, it has got how many days? Come on, let's need. How many days? Now, on the seventh day, he rested. So according to God's uh, calculation, he is on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, he is sitting. Then the saints are worshipping him. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we were on earth, we were the ones sitting. Are you with me? Hallelujah. When we are on earth like we are on earth now, it is the Lord working through us. Tina, we are sitting down. And the Lord is working. And the Lord is working. Hallelujah. But in heaven, the Lord is sitting down. And the Gentiles are doing what? They are standing praising Him. Look, the Bible says the earth is the footstool of the Lord. The earth is where the Lord moves. We move because the Lord moves. So the Lord is at work. You see, it's like in the courtroom. In the courtroom, the accused is sitting down. And the advocate is standing up. Hallelujah. So on earth, the Lord is busy. But in heaven, the Lord is sitting down. And the man who the man to me. Keep quiet. Can someone keep quiet? And 
praise the God. Let's so shall be silenced. Today I don't want to silence things. I just want the saints to praise Him. I just want the saints to lift up their worship. Because when we worship Him, God gives priority to our worship. When the people from earth arrive, and started to say, the other one says, Who are these? The other one in heaven replied, He said, These are the ones that have gone through tribulation. Remember I said, even those that are not going to go to be raptured, they will still be in heaven. But then they have suffered tribulation. Those that are raptured will not suffer tribulation. But those that remain will suffer tribulation. Now when they all arrive, then the end in heaven says, those are the ones that have been true tribulation. Mm, hallelujah. And those are the ones that they could not buy anything. Even if they had money. The Bible says they shall hunger no more. Because they have been denied food on the earth. Now they shall hunger no more. They shall test no more. No more. We will be reigning with the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. I hope somebody has received the word this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to challenge the Christians that we are created to worship the Lord. We're not created to measure ourselves by riches and, and all these other things of the earth. Those that earth the standards. We were created to worship the Lord. If you can still worship the Lord, it is right with you. It is well with you. For worship, it is celebrating the things that you cannot see. It is a praise when you. It is a praise when you see things already. But when you see, don't see things yet. It is called worship. Worship. So we were not called. To compete. In fact, the Bible says, What will it help you? To gain everything and lose your soul. So the important thing is to hold on to the master rather than following things. I'm not saying having things is a sin. I have things. But the things I have, I can give the glory to the Lord. I cannot even say I work hard. Many people work hard. It's not the hard work. It's the Lord. And glory be to Him. So having things is not a seed. In fact, seek Him first. The kingdom of God. And all those things shall be added upon you. Then you do not follow things. You, you follow the Lord. You do not boast and talk about things. You talk and boast about the goodness of God. For the testimony is in the goodness of God. Amen. So as long as we can praise the Lord, it's alright for me. Praise the name of the Lord. When we have things, it's alright. When we don't have things, it's alright. When we have things, we praise Him. When we don't have things, we praise Him. Things mean nothing about us praising Him. We praise Him anyway. I want you to go out there and praise the Lord. I want you to live a joyous life. I want you to live a happy life. Even if you are taking tablets, they work better in a happy spirit. Whatever when you are just a happy person, you 
But when you are always a grumpy person, also full of our talk, our business are seven to one by seven to one. Go out there and praise the Lord. Go out there and just say thank you, Father. When you wake up, I have nothing to complain about, but everything to praise God for. Count the blessings of the Lord. Forget about things that are not working all right. Don't worry about tomorrow. You've got a God to worship. You've got a God to praise. When you're writing a status on your Facebook, just write something positive about God. Worship God in your platform, in your, your media. Worship God in your status, your WhatsApp. Worship God when you come into the into where you work. Tell the security guard that the Lord is good. Tell everybody you meet in the office the Lord is good. Just worship the Lord with everything you have. Give God a hand of praise. We are born to worship. We are never born to compete. We are never born to chase things. We are born to praise the Lord. I want your life to be the life that praises God. To be the life that pleases God. Blessed is the hand that keeps. Be the hand God uses to give somebody something. God wants to give your neighbor something. But he does not have a hand to do so. He relies on somebody who is willing to use his hand. Then when you use your hand to give somebody, then your hand will be blessed. More than the one that receives. Praise the name of the Lord. Now notice this. That is what I don't allow somebody who does not give to lay hands on you because that hand is not blessed. Let me not repeat that. 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 Let me